This week's gospel is a continuation of last week's gospel. It's taken from the 13th chapter of the gospel of Matthew. And Jesus gives us in that one chapter five parables. Now we know a parable is a short story, a familiar image or a word picture that is to illustrate a truth or a challenge to a common outlook. A biblical parable can have many levels of meaning. It challenges us to look beyond the face value of the story. It challenges us to look deeper, very deep for the hidden truths of God in which the story is designed to reveal. Now in last week's gospel, if we remember, it was the parable of the sower of the seeds. Some seed fell on the path, and it said the birds come and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, but because it had no soil, it had no root, it withered when the sun came. Some fell among the thorns, but the thorns grew up and choked the seed out. But it said some fell on good soil, and it produced an abundant fruit, an abundant fruit, a 100-fold. You see, this parable we can be likened to the Word of God and how we respond to that Word in faith. The Word of God, or faith, is freely given to all, but for some, they just simply reject it. For some, they receive it for a short time, but because of lack of depth or root, it is short-lived. That faith is short-lived and it seems to die out. But when the Word of God falls on a heart that has been properly prepared, a heart that is open and ready to receive it, it is in that person that it can take root and it can grow, producing a hundredfold at the harvest. When properly received and properly nurtured, our faith can grow and it can spread. It can become contagious, affecting not only our own lives, but those lives that are around us. In today's gospel reading, Jesus, he gives us three parables. But he only explains one of those parables to his disciples. The parable of the wheat and the weeds. One might say that this is just a teaching about good and evil. And we might ask, why does God allow both good and evil to coexist in the world? Well, I don't know about you. It's very relevant to me in this day and time in which we're living. I think the world has gone bonkers. I don't know about you. But it seems that we're living in a time that most in our society wants to call evil good and good evil. Darkness and the works of the evil one seem to be all around us. We're living in a time that in the name of women's health care, that mothers can choose to murder their own child within the womb. The government subsidizes Planned Parenthood, the biggest abortion bill, abortion bill in the country probably in the world with our taxpayer dollars. And we have government officials going on TV applauding themselves, governors, applauding themselves for enacting legislation for late-term late abortions, even up to the time of delivery. Murdering an unborn babies in the name of women's health care. We're living in a time that is popular thought is that a person has a right to choose their own gender. Dismissing and ignoring science, biology, physiology, natural and divine law. It says that one can choose their gender based on their feelings. But God said he created them male and female. And he said of this creation, this creation is very good. We're living in a time when the God-given institution of holy matrimony has been changed and redefined by a secular pagan society. The covenant of marriage between one man and one woman, two becoming one flesh, participating in the life-giving power of God himself has been redefined. We're also living in a time when if a person says all lives matter, they're called a bigot, a racist, a hater. But that is what God says. All lives matter. All human life matters matters. There is one race, the human race, with different ethnicities. We're all created in the image and likeness of our Creator. All human life has intrinsic value, and the soul once created will never cease to exist. 
that person never ceases to exist. We are created the love of God, to know God, and to serve God, and to be with Him for all of eternity. That's why we were created. He has offered us all a way back. We are all sinners. We're all fallen and not deserving. But He has offered a way back to Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. But we know the scripture. For God so loved the world, that fallen world, that he gave us his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish or be separated, but will have eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus explains his own parable of the wheat and weeds to his disciples. The one who sows is the son of man. That is Jesus. The field is the world. The weeds are the children of the evil one. Those who reject God and his ways. The enemy who sows is the devil. And the harvest is at the end of age. And the harvesters are the angels. At the end of time, God will send his angels to collect out of the kingdom the evildoers and those who cause others to sin and will throw them in that fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And the righteous, the good, the followers of Jesus will shine like the sun in the kingdom of God. My dear brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is unfolding before our very eyes. God's will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And it is because of God's great love for all of humanity that he allows those who reject and hate, those who do evil, those who cause others to sin, that he allows the sinner and the evildoers to remain. Allowing them time. Out of love, he's allowing them time and every opportunity to repent and to turn from their evil ways. Open their hearts to him to receive his grace, his gift, his forgiveness, his love. You see, God desires that those, even with the most hardened hearts, will turn to him in repentance and open themselves to receive his divine love. The wheat and the weeds will remain. The good and the evil will continue in this world for a time. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that is mixed in dough until the whole batch is leavened. You see, a small amount of yeast can mix in the dough and it can make it rise and expand many times its normal size. You see, that's how it is with our faith. To allow God's grace to expand and to grow in our lives. The scripture says that you are the salt of the earth. You are are the light of the world. Let your light shine before all men so that they can see your good works, see your faith, see your relationship with Jesus so that they may give glory to your Father in heaven. We are all called to live our faith intentionally as intentional disciples, to live our faith in both word and in deed, what we say and what we do. We are called to share this great gift that has been given to us with other people. Our faith cannot be a private thing kept only between me and God. It has to be lived out in boldness. We are called to speak the truth to the world, to a fallen world, with love. A world that in many cases is not willing to accept the truth. But God will give us everything that we need. Everything that we need to accomplish His call on our lives. We hear in our second reading from St. Paul today, it says the Spirit, the Spirit comes to our aid in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. Some scripture says, for too deep for words. And the one who searches the heart and knows the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will, that very Spirit, the spirit that lives within us, the paraclete, the advocate with the Father, continues to intercede for us at the throne of grace. Our country is founded on you, Judeo-Christian principles, but we have rapidly moved away from God and his ways. Being a Christian, especially Catholic, is not an easy thing in this world in which we're living, you know, secularized and pagan culture. We're actually becoming a minority, or we are a minority, those who follow Christ, the church's teachings, and the sacred scriptures. True followers and true Catholics, 
who will be persecuted for their faith in Christ. But we can boldly stand with confidence, for Christ will never orphan or abandon his own. In fact, Christ speaking to his disciples through sacred scripture, he gives them hope. He gives them a commentary. If the world hates you, know that it has first hated me. If you were of the world, the world would love you. But because you're not of the world, I have chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world will hate you. The world, in the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What a comfort. And I'll leave you with this last scripture. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he, the living God, the spirit that lives within us, the Christ that we receive in communion. Greater is he that is within our mortal soul than it is he in this fallen world, the evil one. May Almighty God bless you and keep you.